emerging world leader with the 12th largest economy in the world. They make the most ships, memory chips, and have the fastest internet in the world. In the last 100 years, South Korea has been invaded, subjugated, and divided. But within two generations, it's brought about an economic miracle that changed the face of the nation. Being voted the third most democratic country in Asia and 21st in the world, its system of democracy and freedom is something to marvel at. However, people tend to forget about what it took to achieve this economic and political marvel. Right after its creation from the Korean War, South Korea was a nation in abject poverty whose lands have been ravaged by war. Korea was divided into two and South Korea adopted the United States democracy as its nation's governing policy. However, democracy in South Korea was left only to wither after its initial implementations. From 5,000 years of dynasties and emperors to democracy and presidents in one year, the rapid and immense changes were overwhelming for South Koreans who were oblivious to the concept of democracy and freedom and were susceptible to dictatorships, military regimes, and corruptions. And that is exactly what happened to South Korea. South Koreans will go through four different dictators in the course of 45 years. From the first dictator, Ri Seung Man, to the fourth, Ro Tae Woo, it seemed like all of South Korea's leaders were corrupt, brutal dictators craving for power and wealth. These dictators often re-elected themselves, suppressed public opinions, and got rid of anyone who got in their way, even if that opposition was the citizens. December 12, 1979, Chun Doo-wan, a highly decorated military officer, led a military coup just three months after the assassination of President Park jong hee And then September 1, 1980, was sworn into office as the fourth president of South Korea. Just as citizens were thinking Park jung hees death might put an end to dictatorship and bring democracy, Chun Doo Hwan, another dictator, had risen to power. He shattered the hopes of all South Koreans. He was just another dictator who used violence to gain power. It seemed like it was impossible for South Korea to escape the endless cycle of dictators. Citizens were extremely upset. Their wishes of democratically electing a president has not been granted in a long time. And on May 17th, they decided that they had had enough. May 17th, college students in Gwangju started a peaceful protest against Chun's regime and were followed by adults and even small children. However, as the numbers of protesters grew more and more by the hour and as the news spread wider and wider, Chun was concerned about his reputation being ruined. In order for Chun to quickly suppress the protests, he deemed it necessary that a direct control over the military was needed and he was able to obtain this absolute control by declaring a state of national emergency. May 18th, he mobilized his forces to Guangzhou, and two days later, sent in airborne troops with automated weapons, tanks, armored vehicles, and helicopters, and cut all phone wires and cables going in and out of Guangzhou. Had the people known what was to come next, thousands of lives could have been saved. May 19, 1980, it was just another day of peaceful protests for the people of Guangzhou, until one deaf man named Kim kyung Chol upset a group of soldiers.
The same day, Chun Du Huan ordered airborne forces to drop on Guangzhou and gave direct orders to open fire towards the crowd of protesters, resulting in 54 deaths and 2,000 injuries. Aroused by the inhumane act by Chun's troops, people in Guangzhou began to fight back with violence. They raided weapons from nearby police stations and armed themselves. In response, Chun ordered his soldiers to use any methods necessary to restrain the protesters. It was a massacre. The untrained citizens of Guangzhou were brutally suppressed in days by the troops. And during the course of the next seven days, 200 people will be killed and 5,000 more will be injured. The cunning Chun Du Han attempted to cover this massacre up with extreme censoring. However, brave reporters like Jorgen Hinspeter and newspaper publishers risked their lives and succeeded in exposing the atrocities committed by Chun's regime. The world, along with the Koreans, were shocked by the horrors of this day. Although an immense tragedy for many Koreans who have lost their lives and their families' lives, the Gwangju movement also served as the opportunity for true democracy to triumph in South Korea. The Gwangju movement prompted hundreds of more protests against the tyrannical government and forced changes to be made. These protests gave confidence to South Koreans, proved that the opinion of the citizens can, in fact, overpower any government and gave South Koreans the inspiration to educate themselves about democracy and their rights. As a result of these protests, the first real democratic election was held in 1992. And the first truly elected president, Kim Young Sam, an anti Chun Doo politician, was sworn into office. The lasting effects of the Gwangju movement can still be felt today. Just recently, the Korean government, prompted by President Moon Jae in, acknowledged the legitimacy of the Gwangju movement after years of denying it while also promising further investigations into it. Since the Gwangju movement, South Korea has risen from the ashes and developed into a first world country, representing peace, hope, advancement, and achievement. It is the birthplace of a Nobel Peace Prize winner, renowned artists, researchers, politicians, singers, world-class athletes, and many global companies like Samsung, Hyundai, Kia, and LG. South Korea now sits as one of the greatest countries in the world and boasts economic and industrial strength, with a GDP of $1.5 trillion, a life expectancy of 82 years, and an average income of $31,000. All thanks to the intellectual, political, and economic developments caused by movements like the Gwangju protest. You don't think that the Gwangju movement was one of, if not the most desolate and heartbreaking moments of South Korean history. However, it was a milestone that provided one of the most crucial steps towards South Korea's prosperity. If this is not triumph and tragedy, what is? Yeah.